Hi folks, just going to do a quick eye test podcast for West Ham against Fulham. Finished 3-1 to the Hammers. Uh, Fulham are in big trouble. Uh, they've been in big, big trouble for a long time, but they were pretty awful again tonight. The the team news, first of all, Arnautovic was on the bench again with Hernandez starting up front. No Balbuena, who is due back pretty soon. Uh, Nasri and Lanzini were on the bench as well for West Ham. And Zavaleta came back in at right back in place of Fredericks. For Fulham, there was no Shirla in the squad at all, and, and Ryan Sessegnon and Tom Kearney came back into the starting lineup. So this this was a game, really, it was all about uh, Robert Snodgrass and his corners. I think West Ham had 12 corners. I'm pretty sure Snodgrass took every one of them. Fulham had had zero corners, and, and that really that really was the difference in the game. Uh, two of West Ham's goals came from Snodgrass corners. Um He's one of the best, one of the best set piece takers in the league, uh, it, corners in particular, and and Rico was just he was flapping, flapping the whole game. He's a he seems to be a pretty poor goalkeeper. Um, all, all said, so first first five minutes of the game, it was a very odd first five minutes. West Ham just didn't really turn up for the first five minutes. They were asleep. Uh, within the first 40, 50 seconds, Sabaleta played a. a very poor back pass, put Ryan Babel one on one with Fabianski, and it looked like it was going to be one nil within the first minute, but he, he hit it straight at, at the keeper. Um but two minutes later, uh again Zabaleta was poor, a ball played played in behind him to, to Sessignon on the left side and he put a good cross in and, and Babel finished this time, so one nil after three minutes. Uh, and a terrible first five minutes for Zabaleta, who ended up getting taken off at half time for Frederick. So he had a very poor game defensively. Zabaleta, he he was actually a, a big threat going forward, but uh, I think his defensive mistakes cost him uh, getting getting hauled off at half time. And Frederick's Frederick's had a pretty good second half. He made one crucial intervention from Mitrovic, which I don't think uh, Zabaleta would have got to. Uh, you know, Frederick's pace pace got him back. So that was 1-0 Fulham, uh, but after that West Ham got going and really took control of the game then. Um, even, even, you know, it was after about 10 minutes it was 1-0 Fulham, but I just said to myself, this West Ham are going to win this one. You know, if I was in if it was in the bookies I would have been sticking sticking a good few bob in West Ham, even at 1-0 down. So, as I said, it was all about the corners from Snodgrass. The first one, the first West Ham goal after half an hour, Rico flapped at it. Uh, Ogbonna headed it across goal and Hernandez, it looked like Hernandez headed it in but it, he actually handballed it so it was a very uh, you know it was well to see he deceived the referee really um, but he, he gets the goal he gets the FPL p- points Hernandez uh, hand or no hand um, Ogbonna got the assist then 39th minute another Snodgrass corner and Diop a uh, great header Um back of the net I think that's his first goal of the season Diop and he came very close earlier in the game as well from a corner he, he was his inches wide so Diop was actually pretty close to getting a brace tonight um, so at least he gets some decent points despite not not keeping a clean sheet half time then uh, three changes at half time Sabaleta came off for Fredericks for West Ham and, and Fulham made a double change with Sessegnon coming off and Seri Um Seri was I thought Seri was one of the better players first half for Fulham, but he does often get taken off. You know, it's it's not that long ago Seri was being linked with Barcelona. Uh, it's very odd that he, he can't even complete ninety minutes for Fulham now. Sessignon, uh very highly rated player, you know, should should really play a lot more, I think, for Fulham. Uh, as with Tom Kearney, but Sessignon had a very poor game defensively. Uh, and that in the first half, Zabaleta was very good going forward, but it was mainly because uh, Sessignon was pretty poor defensively, and that's probably again another reason why he was taken off at half time. Um, the the second half was a pretty drab affair. Not an awful lot happened. I found myself losing interest in, in the second half. Arnautovic came on uh, in the sixty second minute for Hernandez, and he looked very very sharp when he came on. Uh, he had a very good chance, saved by Rico. Uh, two chances, uh, one in particular, Rico saved it and hit the post. And then uh, Arnautovic ended up getting an assist, uh, a very good cross for Antonio to head in. So, very frustrating for people like me who brought in Felipe Anderson. I haven't owned Anderson all season, earlier in the season when he was doing well for people. And I've done quite a few eye tests for West Ham this season, and if you listen back to them, 
you know, every one of them is a glowing reference to Felipe Anderson. I always say he looks great, he always looks threatening every time he goes forward, but it was a typical case of when you own the player and you need him to do something, he just fails the eye test big time. Um, you know, there's parts of the game he did all right, but, but in FPL terms, he never really looked like scoring or assisting. There was one, one effort that just summed up his game. He took a shot and it, it went backwards out for a throw-in. Um, and he, I know earlier in the season a lot of West Ham fans weren't really happy with him, saying he was very lazy. He is a player that seems to spend an awful lot of time walking around the pitch, even when even West Ham are in attack. You know, he, he will be in good positions, but he, he's he's always walking. He he doesn't make a huge effort to to make space for himself. So, yeah, a lot of us got Anderson this week, uh, disappointing. But we you know we can't really be surprised. He's only got one assist in the last seven or eight games, but. Hopefully, with the good fixtures, he can he can get back to where he was. The worrying thing was he was substituted uh, for the first time since game week 16 with the likes of uh, Lanzini came on for him. So with Lanzini back now, with Nasri almost back as well, we could see reduced minutes for Anderson in the coming game weeks, which is a worry. Uh, Lanzini is probably going to take him a while to get up to speed. I'm always wary of going for a player who's coming back from a serious injury. We often see them picking up niggles. Uh, we've seen that with Nasri already this season, so it, I think it's just a wait and see on Lanzini for me. Um, the main takeaways from the game, really, I would say I'm going to completely avoid Fulham. You know, they're they're absolutely terrible. Um, yes, Babel got a goal, but I really don't I don't I really don't see Fulham scoring much over the next couple of weeks. And that one on one chance that Babel missed that tells me more about him really than the goal. I think last week as well there was a chance. He basically had an open goal. He was right beside the post and somehow he put it wide. So he's not really someone I, I would put faith in. Um, West Ham, again, no clean sheet. Fabianski at least got his customary one save point to get three rather than two. But I just really don't think we can trust West Ham defence. Um, the other problem now is with Lanzini and Nasri back, with you know Arnautovic bench two weeks in a row, it's very hard to predict the lineup going forward. So that's another worry. So maybe it's a case of just avoiding West Ham, even though they do play in the blank. So it's all a bit of a minefield now, I think. Felipe Anderson, I probably will end up keeping him, but I don't know if I'd be bringing him in, you know, having watched him tonight. That is West Ham Fulham covered. Um, I, I did mention Snodgrass, you know, he took 12 corners, or I think he did, he took most of them. I, I, didn't re I can't remember anyone else taking one. You know, even his place could be under threat with all these players coming back from injury, but he, he did have a, a pretty good game himself. In the other game tonight, Watford beat Cardiff 5-1. Didn't really see that result coming. And De La Feu, a hat-trick and an assist. Looks like he's going to get 23 points when he gets three bonus. I th I'm pretty sure that's going to be the highest score for any player this season in a single game week. So absolutely ridiculous numbers for De La Feu tonight. So... If you're one of the 1.8% who own him, well done. But I can't imagine there's going to be too many people. Uh, De La Feu, in the eight games before tonight, one assist. So we could not see that one coming. I'll leave it there, folks. I've rambled on probably a bit longer than I planned. I'll be back tomorrow, hopefully, with a, an eye test for Spurs Burnley. And I'm not sure... I, I should get to watch the 5.30 game tomorrow as well. And... Sunday, should I should get to watch United Liverpool as well. So I'll get as many eye test podcasts out as I can this weekend. My wife's my wife's gone by to Ireland for the weekend, so I've got an excuse to just binge on on the Premier League action. So I'll be back with a few more tomorrow and Sunday. Enjoy enjoy your weekend, folks. <laughs>